von Willebrand's disease. This is the commonest disorder of hemostasis. It's about 1% of the population. There's a deficiency of von Willebrand factor, which is necessary for platelets to adhere to the endothelium and also is a carrier of factor VIII. It is autosomal dominant mostly, but some cases are recessive. The male to female ratio is one to one. You suspect von Willebrand disease if the patient has prolonged bleeding with aspirin, excess bleeding after a dental extraction or a tonsillectomy, easy bruisability, epistaxis, and menorrhagia. The investigations include a PT which is normal, but a PTT which is prolonged, platelets which are normal, but the bleeding time is prolonged, von Willebrand factor antigen is diminished, the Ristocetin cofactor assay shows the ability of plasma to agglutinate platelets in the presence of Ristocetin, and if this is poor, it indicates low von Willebrand factor activity. Factor VIII is reduced in parallel, but not always the case. Treatment. During surgery or after a major bleed, factor VIII concentrates are given twice a day for two to three days because factor VIII concentrates have von Willebrand factor multimers. Desmopressin is given for mild cases, that is in type 1 disease. Hemophilia A, also called classic hemophilia, it occurs due to a deficiency of factor VIII, which is an X-linked recessive disease. 30% give no family history at all. Males are the ones who are affected, females are the carriers. The clinical features include a recurrent or severe bleed into muscles and joints, causing deformity and contractures easy bruising, gastrointestinal and genitourinary bleed, nasal and oral mucosa bleed. The treatment includes desmopressin for mild cases, factor VIII concentrates, cryoprecipitate which has 50% of one of factor VIII and fresh frozen plasma which has 10% of factor VIII. The presentation of haemophilia B which is due to a deficiency of factor IX is the same as haemophilia A. The treatment includes factor IX or fresh frozen plasma, which is given once a day during the bleed, as factor IX has a half-life of 24 hours. You could also give prothrombin complex protein, but this has a high risk of thrombosis. Immune thrombocytopenic purpura. This can be acute or chronic. Acute cases are caused by antiplatelet antibodies that occur two weeks after usually an upper urinary upper respiratory tract infection. Immune thrombocytopenic purpura, also called idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or ITP. This can be acute or chronic. Acute is caused by antiplatelet antibodies two weeks after an infection, usually an upper respiratory tract infection caused by CMV, Epstein-Barr virus, HIV and parvovirus B19. It usually occurs in children. The patient presents with petechiae, purpurae and easy bruising. 60% recover in four weeks, more than 90% recover in three to six months. We would do a bone marrow assay to rule out aplastic anemia and leukemia and we test for antiplatelet antibodies which are elevated but this is not specific for ITP. Chronic ITP occurs mostly in adults, mostly women aged 20 to 40 years. The workup is done to rule out bone marrow disorders and SLE, therefore we have to do an ANA. If there is lymph node enlargement, hepatosplenomegaly, we do assays for CMV, Epstein-Barr virus, HIV, toxoplasma and hepatitis B and C. Treatment includes steroids. If they don't respond, we give them IV immunoglobulin. If that doesn't respond, we give them anti-D. Emergency splenectomy is done if they don't respond to medical treatment. Elective splenectomy is done in chronic ITP if they fail to maintain normal platelet count after steroids. And if still no response, we give them azothioprine or cyclophosphamide. Rituximab anti-CD20 is preferable to long-term steroids.
thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, or TTP. It occurs due to endothelial injury, which causes the release of a large amount of von Willebrand factor. And there is microvascular deposition of hyaline fibrin thrombi, causing microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. The causes include pregnancy, metastatic cancer, HIV, mycin C, and tychopidy. It's a life-threatening syndrome of Coombs negative hemolytic anemia with schistocytes on the film, thrombocytopenia, and extremely high LDH. Clinical features include fever, which is non-infectious, neurological abnormalities like confusion and delirium, seizures and coma, and kidney abnormalities, which are renal failure. PT, PTT and fibrin degradation products are usually normal. The treatment is plasmapheresis or exchange transfusion daily until the platelet count stabilizes to normal and the schistocytes disappear and the LDH comes down to normal. Hemolytic uremic syndrome is the most common cause of acute renal failure in children. The patient presents with kidney failure, thrombocytopenia and microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. It's due to E. coli and Shiga toxin. The initial presentation is with abdominal pain and diarrhea, followed by bloody diarrhea. The treatment is supportive. There is no need for any steroids or antibiotics. DIC, or disseminated intravascular coagulation, can be acute or chronic. In acute cases, the patient has bleeding manifestations, while in chronic cases, the patient has venous thrombosis and embolic events. Lab characteristics include thrombocytopenia, elevated PT, PTT, and a decreased fibrinogen. We treat the underlying cause, replace platelets, FFP, cryopresptate, and in chronic DIC to reduce the risk of thromboembolism, heparin is indicated.